One of my favorite narrations about a student of Ibn Mas'ud, you know, you have many students. Actually, if you look at, if you go to the books of the Siyar, if you go to the books of biographies of these people and you look at the students of Ibn Mas'ud, it takes up pages. Just by the time they list all of the Sahaba that narrated from him and that studied with him, and, you know, that, that considered themselves as students, it's longer than anyone else that we've talked about. By far, it's one of the longest that exists, one of the longest lists that exists. But um, an Imam al-Dhabi rahimahullah says one time, and this is an authentic narration, it comes in actually a few books, that one time Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu was passing by an area in Kufa and he saw a group of drunk young men. They were all drunk. All right? And while they were drunk, they were having this party amongst themselves. And there was a young man by the name of Zadhan. Zadhan. And Zadhan was singing. He was entertaining them. He was singing to them while they were drinking. So as Zadhan is singing and as Zadhan has this voice, Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he was wearing something that covered his, his head, it kind of extended over his head. He moved it back, he looked at him, and he said, instead of, and instead of chastising them, he looked at the man and he said, مَا أَحْسَنَ هَذَا الصوت. What a beautiful voice. لَوْ كَانَ بِقِرَاءَةِ كِتَابِ اللَّهِ If only he used that voice to read the Qur'an. Like it's such a sad, it's so sad that he's sitting there singing meaningless songs and he's wasting his time singing. If he used that voice for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for the Qur'an, things would be beautiful. He covered his head again, he walked away. Zadhan, he noticed that the youth kind of got intimidated by his presence. So Zadhan said, Man kana hadha? Who was that? They said, that's Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu, one of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said, وَمَاذَا قَالْ? What did he say? He said, ما أحسن هذا الصوت. What a beautiful voice. لو كان بقراءة كتاب الله. If only he used it for the recitation of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Zadhan was carrying a oud. He was carrying an instrument. كسر العود. He broke his instrument. And he ran after Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And when he got to Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu, جعل يبكي بين يدي. He hugged him and he just started crying on him. And subhanAllah, he just kept on crying on him and crying on him and crying on him. Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he took him as a student. Zadhan became one of his greatest students. And Zadhan actually is one of the transmitters of his riwayah, in, in his, 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 his recitation of Qur'an. He also became a muhaddith, a narrator of hadith. He narrated from Umar, from Uthman, from Ali, from Ibn Mas'ud, from Ibn Abbas, from Salman al-Farisi, from Ammar ibn Yasir. <laughs> SubhanAllah, look at... Look at the heart of Ibn Mas'ud. And we said this when we were talking about Abdullah ibn Umar, right? What the Prophet ﷺ said about Abdullah ibn Umar, Ni'mar rajul. He's a good man, but if only he would pray a little bit of Qiyamul Layl, he'd be even better. Ibn Mas'ud could have just gotten his instrument and started yelling at him and throwing, you know, throwing things and making a fuss. But instead Ibn Mas'ud said, that's a beautiful voice. If only he'd use that for Qur'an. And that's exactly what happened. SubhanAllah, his wish came true. Uh, with Zadhan. And Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, one of his descriptions is that he had husn al in the people. He had good expectations of the people. Remember he narrated that hadith, layin, right, to be gentle and kind with the people. He had good expectations of the people. So in Kufa once, Zayd ibn Wahb says there was a man whose beard was still soaked from wine. And they brought him to Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu and they said, punish him. And Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, we have been prohibited to seek out people's faults. We don't seek out people's faults. If he publicly drinks, then we'll deal with him. Otherwise, don't you want him to turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Wouldn't it be more beloved to you that he turns back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Why, what, what good am I going to get out of punishing him right now? He, you went and you pulled him out of his house, right, while he was drinking. That's not the point. You know, and, and subhanAllah, the sharia never had that objective. The sharia is not to punish people brutally and things of that sort. There's, you know, these laws, these hudud, are meant to be discretionary in their nature. So that people don't do these things publicly. So Ibn Mas'ud said, what's the good of us punishing this man? Instead, what if he repents to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? That would be better. It would be better for him and it would be better for you. And subhanAllah, that man, Zayd ibn Wahb says, Taba wa hasuna islamu. He repented and his islam was good. And one of the things that Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, he said, if I mocked a dog, I would be afraid that Allah azawajal would transform me into one. Don't mock the people. If I mocked a dog, you know when you see people that are really bad, falling, and you make, you make statements about them, be careful, Allah azawajal might make you commit the same sin as them. Don't mock the people. Right? Have husn al in the people, instead see good in the people. He also had incredible humility. All right? 
Now I want you to imagine, all right, uh, who's the greatest uh, scholar in the world? Norman Ali Khan, of course, right? You know? <laughs> no, but, but seriously, all right, let's just take anyone that you love, take any teacher that you love. Let's say that you're, you're with your teacher and you're in the marketplace, right? You're in the mall and somebody robs him, all right? Aren't you gonna be, aren't you gonna take it like personally, someone that you love, you know, that, that taught you a lot about the religion and somebody robbed him, someone stole from him? It would really get on, it would really hurt you. You'd really get upset about it, okay? Ibn Mas'ud anhu is in the marketplace and he's a small man. So, you know, a robber found it really easy to take his stuff from him. So literally he's in the middle of the souk. Can you imagine Ibn Mas'ud, out of all people, the guy that had that, that, that used to carry the, the sandals of the Prophet someone had the audacity to steal from him and run away. And when that happened, everyone just got so angry and upset. They wanted to find this man and kill him. So there was just this loud uproar and people were like, we're going to find him and we're going to kill him. Right? We're not just going to do the had on him. We're not just going to cut his hand off. We're going to kill this man. Like, how dare he? You know, what kind of person is this to steal from Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu? Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, he, tell, he starts screaming to everyone to stop. And when he gets quiet, he makes everyone settle down. Quiet. Everyone gets quiet. Then he goes, Allahumma in kana miskina. Oh Allah, if he was a poor man. فَبَارِكْ لَهُ فِي مَا أَخْذَ مِنِّي <laughs> Bless him and that which he stole from me. He was a poor man. SubhanAllah. And he made a dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. اللَّهُمَّ جُرْنِي فِي مُصِيبَتِي وَخْلُفْ لِي خَيْرَ مَنْ What the Prophet ﷺ taught that when you lose something, say, Oh Allah, compensate me for my tragedy and give me something better than that which was taken away from me. Khalas, don't go find this man. Leave him alone. That's Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu. That's the amount of humility. He also narrates the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ that Rasulullah ﷺ said that the closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment would be those who are closest to the Imam on the manbar. Now the sisters are probably like, well that's not fair. The meaning of the hadith is not literally the closest to the Imam on the manbar, it means the first to the masjid. All right? That's actually the meaning of the hadith. It's not actually physical. That doesn't mean go sit on the wall. right? On purpose. No, but it, what it really means is that the person who gets to the masjid first, who rushes to the remembrance of Allah first. So Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu Masruq says, no one ever got to Jum'ah before him. Nobody ever got to Jum'ah before him. Except one week, he got held back and he got to the masjid and he found three people there. And he started crying. <laughs> that three people got to the masjid before him. And he, he held his beard and he said, Yabna Mas'ud. Rabi'u Arba'a Yabn Mas'ud Rabi'u Arba'a You're the fourth to get to the You're the fourth of four Yabn Mas'ud What's wrong with you? You're the fourth of four? SubhanAllah So, so his humility, his ibadah Just like all of the others is just, it's, it's stunning And that, that really shows you, you know, Having ulu al himma Like aiming high you know, Aiming always to try to get Try to attain the rewards of Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala Trying to be that person was going to outdo others in ibadah. This is something consistent with all of the ibadah, that they were always trying to outdo everyone else in doing good deeds. So this is also something that he had, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And people would come to him, and uh, you know, they, they, would, they would ask to study, you know, they'd ask for his companionship, and he would say, Wallahi, if you knew about me, what I know about myself, you would put dirt on my head. You don't want my companionship. Go take the companionship of Hudayfa and others. You don't want my, I don't have anything to offer you that's good. Even though he's the closest to the Prophet ﷺ, hadyan wa dallan wa samtan, in his character and in his behavior, he's the closest to the Prophet ﷺ. He says, if you people knew who I was, you'd put dirt on my head. 